questions about trekking. Two people who go trekking are here to answer your questions about trekking. Introducing the Tuesday Tune-In, hosted by Andy and Dave. Are we live? No. As far as we know, it's live. Let's check if we're live, mate. Let's check if we're live. Are we live? Live. 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 Tackling subjects such as... Talking about group travel. Charities. Altitude. Flying. Footwear. Vaccination. Fitness. So you can make an informed decision about trips and go into them as prepared as possible. Years of expertise shrouded in top-level banter. Tune in every Tuesday at 12.30-ish. Wow, Dave, that, I think that was seamless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, guys, how are we doing? Um, oh, sorry, God. before we play that uh, today. Um, I I hope you're, can you hear us okay? We're, we're, we're clearly sorting out the tech here. Uh, <laughs> we thought we'd do a little bit of um, our, our, our new little trailer. And I know it's weird because we did it as an intro um whereas that's a trailer but we thought we'd, we'd put that live anyway but yeah dave are we live 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 <laughs> but i um that is you were laughing your head off that is like a two-year-long chronicle of bad hair <laughs> honestly it's, the, it's still it, going too look at these you know what, the worst <laughs> the worst one is that one of the the lockdown here where it just kind of mm. did this 90s curtain style and dave you're looking looking sharp mate is this new no uh, yeah but i've had a Haircut, yeah. no. <laughs> well it's, it's it's a while for me but no it is um yeah i hope you, hope you guys enjoyed that and welcome um tuesday tune in i'm back this week for all the regulars um i know you had dave and one of our ever trackers kate uh kate ramsey i hope yep. you enjoyed her story um had the pleasure of trekking with her um, in april 2019 she's she's an awesome awesome person and um <clears throat> yeah i hope it was useful as well um dave obviously you know i know you were there I, I was, yeah. You were there. Um, yeah, it seemed like a good life. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, no, it was great. Well, it occurred to me that, you know, obviously we, we've we run the, the competitions now and, and quite a few people have won and gone, but we've never actually heard back from them. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, and, yeah, yeah, that's um, true. Actually, yeah. Kate was, uh, I, well, I was lucky enough to kind of go trekking with Kate um, and you and yeah. we went to BBC together and then we went to Ben Nevis together. Yeah. And... I got to know her really well and it was really interesting to kind of like it's it's it, it was like a, a an inadvertent case study where i never knew i never met her before in my life she won and then i follow her journey from like winning on the live to the prep to go in onto base camp to coming back yeah. meeting up again and finding out how it's done so brilliant yeah no it was really really good um so i was I going to miss it dave going to miss it yeah uh, well, mate, you know, you didn't see that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I just read Sh Shona's comments there. Um, is it T-shirt, Evertrek T-shirt and a haircut? Yeah, Dave, you, you, you've got the memo then. Yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I, I think for the longest time now, I you know, I don't, I don't, I don't rep the brand when I'm on the live, you know. But also, no, it, do, you know, do you know how hard it is every Tuesday to find a T-shirt that isn't a North Face? I can one. imagine, mate. I can imagine. I've been buying North Face T-shirts for... 15 years man and that's, that's all and i you know me i don't throw a t-shirt away <laughs> it generally just disintegrates but yeah so it's, it's getting tricky but they shouldn't have they shouldn't have they shouldn't have caught this thing i know they, they, they've been calling it every week but look if, if, if you are new to this tuesday tune in this is our 109th john tuesday Brackenton. he's not is he john from bracken's on john yeah. uh, 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 he's been a, a fixture of evertrek for many years yeah but yeah we've been doing these tune-ins for, for a long time now certainly we we started during covid when we couldn't travel and you know everyone was at home i know we've, we've kind of moved on from that um but everyone um lots of evertrackers seem to enjoy them and find value from them you know we're regular to chat about different things um always have a bit of a laugh but essentially they're they're an opportunity for everyone to, to get their questions answered and we always talk about things different things um going everything from from killy well, Travis space camp they, saw so it, they, saw it at they the did see it. i'm, I'm doing a bit of an intro vaccinations <laughs> uh group trips yeah. charities yeah that was quite good wasn't it and, yeah. and yeah steve and zach um are two of our video guys they made that and uh, yes pretty awesome well done guys if you're on here but yeah today um is and i know a lot of you have entered our recent competition um so today we're going to be doing the winner announcement of that um uh, who we've got on, on the actually you don't, should don't. you should probably hide that board uh, that's all right dave you just don't move <laughs> Because no 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 Dave Dave, Dave. <laughs> uh, almost almost wow 
Um, there we go. Good. So Dave, uh, as we've already got the person um, written on that. Um, but yeah, we're really excited to, to announce the winner. We'll be doing that probably about two thirds in. Um, so uh, and if you're watching this for the very first time, do um, do hang in there. They're always we, we, we like to talk about trips. And today we'll be talking about Kili uh, because the competition was around Kilimanjaro. So before we go deep into Kilimanjaro today. Yep. Um, and everything, which um, obviously we've, we've, we've done. Dave, we've got people on there at the moment. Yeah. I think we had four summits. What was it day before last? We had a group on the yeah. summit. Again, yeah, quite, which quite was a good. few. Yeah, we had a really, we had a really good picture taken. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see if I can find it. And, you know, the, once again, and the seamless technology. Is, is this the, what it is? The, the, gonna, the seamless, gonna, okay. seamless use of technology. Well, I was just sorting that out then. Um, yeah, how is everyone today then? Who have we got on here? We got... The usuals. Um, ah, very nice. See that, that, there's that, Dave Redding on there as yeah, well. Yeah, I, I think there's a few guys on there. So you, awesome. Actually, it's better if I bring it out a bit. No, that's good. Mate. But um, I like it. Look, it's good weather as well. Yeah, I stood, yeah. I, it's so crazy. When we were there, yeah, it was yeah. just complete glacier. So as you can see, they're stood on actual rock there with blue sky. It's kind of melty quite a bit, isn't it? Look, we were, oh. it was just stood on ice and it was very, um, yeah. very white. But um, yeah, I, I, you know, more recently, believe it or not, I re-listened to the podcast. That we recorded... Oh. That's still my favorite one that we struggle to breathe yeah still my favorite one yeah <laughs> like, like that's the great thing when you get to nearly six thousand meters and andy puts a microphone on you and says <laughs> tell us how you're feeling david and you're like oh, i'm feeling great but um no kilimanjaro honestly was one of yeah. those it was an amazing experience and um it's so different because obviously we we started pretty yeah. much in the himalaya um yes. sending people to everest base camp and <clears throat> They, they always kind of get bundled in together, don't they? You know, I want to do base camp, or I don't know what to do yeah, first, Killy or base camp. The, the big three, aren't they, with, with Machu Picchu, which is yeah. another another biggie in the but trekking world. They couldn't be more different, yeah. in my opinion. I yeah. think that, you know, doing Kilimanjaro and doing Everest base camp is two completely different flavor trips. Yes. The experiences are different, <clears throat> um, but both equally as awesome, I think. Yeah, they're, they're both uh, they're both challenging their own right. Um, I mean, I know we're, we'll, we will talk about Killy a lot today. We'll be referencing other trips. But as Dave said, you know, we, we did begin in the Himalayas, starting Everest Base Camp was our first trip. That's where the name came from. Um, and then, you know, we had Ever Trekkers coming back and, and loving it and saying, oh, you know what? Um, uh, you know, where else do you do? Um, and we we kind of, uh, you know, obviously expanded our, our, our trips. And yeah, Kilimanjaro has become almost, if not more popular than Everest Base Camp but because of, you know, its popularity. Um, you know, a lot of celebrities do it for charity and things like that. And it's, it's an achievable... Yeah mounted summit um, whereas Everest Base Camp you're journeying through a landscape uh, uh, essentially to an X on the map which uh, you know rumors are could be moving yeah um obviously with uh, it's more about the summit camp really than the trekking part of it um but then with Killy the summit is the summit and you know you are summiting a peak so it is completely different you are camping on a mountain in certain camps to get as high as you can um whereas Everest Base Camp you're traveling through where people are already living so it is a different experience both are amazing. Um, you know, if you were to kind of match up both together, because one of the big questions that people ask is, you know, okay, what, what should I do first? Should I do Kilimanjaro first? Yeah. Should I do have a space camp first? You know, obviously, what's the altitude like? If I haven't been to altitude, you know, some of these big questions that come up. And, you know, there's no there's, there's no right or wrong answer, really, when it, when it comes to which to do, because a lot of people um, do have a space camp first, because it's, you know, the pop, popular one. It's Everest. It's got a lot, of, got a lot behind it. Um, some people have, um, you know, book on to us and we're like, oh, have you got any experience? And like, yeah, I've done Killy already. I've done Machu Picchu and they want to have a space camp. So it, it kind of switches back both ways. But David, if which one did you find harder out of the two? If, good, if you were, if you were, it's a good question. Next and question. I get asked it a lot. Yeah. Um, honestly, I would, <clears throat> I would probably say Kilimanjaro. Okay. But just because of one day. Yeah. The, um, summit. the summit night. Yeah. I think the summit East. night on Kilimanjaro is tougher than any one day on the Everest base camp track. Yeah. Probably the most nearest equivalent you'll have is Kalapatar. But Kalapatar is over in a few hours. You know, summit night, you're awake for, you know, well over 24 hours. Yeah. Um, you know, you might have trekked at night before. Yeah. You might have trekked at altitude before. <clears throat> you know, but, and you, to do, and you might have, you know, trekked with no sleep before, but yeah. to do all three of those things for the first time on Kilimanjaro doing summit night, yeah, it was absolutely epic. Yeah. I honestly think it was, it wasn't sort of scary epic. It was just sort of, wow, I'm doing this, you know, and you really do get a sense of, okay, I'm heading for the summit of a mountain now. It's all been leading to this. Yeah. The energy's there and it's real, real exciting. <coughs> I absolutely loved summit night on Kilimanjaro. I, it was one of the best 
you know when everything kind of comes together for you it was yeah. like it was like the opposite of my feeling on another <laughs> another main which was you know i felt good i was strong um i was well acclimatized and it was one of those things where i just thought i'm gonna do it yeah. i love that feeling you, you know it, before you reach the summit but you know you're gonna get there yeah and you're like I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. It's like being it's a, a good kid. feeling. It's like it? being a kid on Christmas Eve. Yeah, I think you know. You you know you're gonna get those gifts. It's Christmas Day tomorrow. All I'm gonna do is just get through this like next it. few hours, and that's what it was like for me. Um, well, I was um, I was still asleep, uh, waiting for Father Christmas to arrive because as I arrived at the top of the summit, <clears throat> I pretty much only just woke up. Yeah, what? Well, yeah, I, I do remember. I, I do enjoy my sleep. I, well, I remember specifically, I was a few steps ahead. Yeah, and. The sun was going to rise, and I thought, oh, I'll wait for Andy and we'll watch the sunset. Yeah. Very romantic. And I turned hey, back and wow. I was like, and I was watching him walk towards me. I was like, has he got his eyes closed? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no. Well, I had this thing where it is literally you could uh, summit in Killy, which is all about the summit day. I mean, it's an amazing trip because uh, summit day is such a beast. Yeah. And for someone like me who likes my sleep <clears throat> and only having like one, one hour and a half, whatever, before we actually started, we started our, um, our climb. Um, um, from uh, Barafu camp, which is essentially the last camp before you 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 go to the summit, and it's um, what was it half ten we got up, eleven we started, eleven p.m. and then you hike in through the night, which is something really I hadn't been accustomed to. Um, you know now, you know this is a while back now, but we do kind of put that in and recommend that if you can get out and do a, a couple of night hikes before you do Killy, yeah. you know it's not such a strange feeling um if you're thinking of doing it but yeah he's right like as you're going up and i was because we have you know you're walking so slow and um i kind of like i was like ah, shut my eyes for a minute and then i'm like this and clearly you caught me out yeah, uh, yeah i was feeling great it was just tiredness and no, you know, it, it, if any of you have been on killy and, and can recognize this um tell us how you how you were how was it for you i know uh jerome's on here who's done killy uh one of our one of our big ever trekkers now he's doing base camp in october um I know he's he's done Killy on here. Any others done Kilimanjaro on here? Any ever trekkers? Um, I know a lot of you are planned in to, to do it already, and a lot of you have entered the competition. So who knows what will happen there? Yeah. Um, good luck with the the competition as well. But yeah, let's know what you got on because I'm always uh, interested to to find out you know how how different people kind of find it. Um, you know, and we kind of you know from our our years now of doing it, we we we, we know what works. We yeah. like for instance, you know we. Um, I know we talked about different routes and a big yeah. decision for us when we, when we started doing Killy was which route shall we do, which has the best uh, success rate and which is the best for acclimatization because acclimatization is the important thing. Right? Yeah. hundred percent. It's all about acclimatizing. Yeah. Um, you know, there are very few people that can actually arrive at, you know, high altitude with very little time to adjust and, and feel okay with it. And it is a bit of a, you know, it's a roll of the dice. So when we do Kilimanjaro, we only do one route. Um, there's loads to get up there you know they you know they, they call it the coca-cola route you know there's the Marangi, Mash yeah. uh, mashame and a few yeah. others we only do the lamosha route yeah and we chose that um it was what we had in mind anyway but we go over there we talk to our the guides who have all the experience on the mountain um like a lot of our guides one like yesi silvano they've all done it hundreds of times yeah. and we say to them what's the you know there's no guarantees in this game but you know what's the best way to get people to the top not just dragging them there but get them to the top healthy and you know cognizant and happy with what they've done and they're at, every time lamosha route yeah lamosha route it's eight days you get time to adjust there's a moment on there where you climb high and then come back down again which is lava tower lava tower yeah always fun felt always fun. i felt magical at lava tower i remember <laughs> that day like it was yesterday Excuse yeah me. if um <clears throat> actually lava it was funny like felt fine on the summit lava tower yeah, it's a beast, isn't it? Well, the thing is, you're, you're, you're quite high, quite quick into yeah. the trip. <clears throat> so your body's just trying to work itself out. Um, you know, there's a couple of questions we, we've had come in, and we'll, we'll definitely we'll answer those. One of those was about kind of altitude and, you know, about age as well, but we'll definitely come into it. But with altitude, essentially, and this is on any trip, um, you know, it, it's all about climatization. That you, you have to go slow, drink plenty of water, look after your body. And then, as Dave said, then, the Lamosha route is, is built that way. The... You're kind of guided by the landscape, uh, in, to be honest, which, which is great because the altitude profile is perfect for acclimatization. Um, you know, and it's not guaranteed. You know, when it, when we talk about altitude, some people it just doesn't agree with them. Yeah, um, I mean, and sometimes you'll never know until you're there. But you know, 
99% of the time, you're, you're fine if you do, you know, some simple things. As we said, go really slow. Um, so your body is acclimatizing, hydrating yourself. And also the mind is a powerful, powerful thing. Um, you know, when we're not just saying, oh, yeah, you, you start to think positively, that is it. But it's it's better than if, imagine every day waking up going, feeling, oh, my God, I'm suffering the altitude sickness. Oh, my God, altitude, 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 altitude. All you're thinking about is about the altitude. What's going to happen? It's yeah. like anything, isn't it? Um, well, you know, so you, you, you want to kind of approach it with that mindset of I've got the challenge. I'm going to enjoy this as much as my as much as I can. I know it's a challenge. It's not a holiday. It's adventure. But I'm going to go out at this in the most positive way I can and try to enjoy it as well because, yeah. you know, these are once in a lifetime things. I mean, there's always uncertainty with it, with these type of trips. Nothing's yeah. 100% guaranteed. Yeah. You know, um, there are... <clears throat> high altitude mountaineers that have summited Everest that have turned back before camp two. You know, yeah. it happens from time yeah, to time. Does, yeah. And I remember even um, Nims suffer altitude. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you think he was everyone does. as well. <laughs> but uh we've all been there. One of the um <laughs> you know I nearly put the Nims top on the day and I was like, not on today's life, mate. not on today's life. This is all about the this is all about, it's all about the threat today, <laughs> but um but no I remember one of the guides telling me when um we were out there and we were talking about you know what what What's your experience of people on the Lamotia route? How do you find people adjust to the altitude? Yeah. And 100%, he said a big part of it is if you go into it, it's, it's a lot of people's biggest worry because yeah. you can see it, touch it, smell it. It happens imperceptibly, and then you'll start to feel unwell, and you, there's a, a feeling of loss of control. Yeah. So people tend to get a lot of anxiety about that. And oftentimes he told me that the experiences that they're having – Okay, they might have a little bit of altitude to adjust to, but the anxiety is actually worse. Yeah, you know, and they start to you know have to come down because of that, and that's why I think trust the guides, trust in what you're doing, and the guides will know whether you're able to kind of go on or not. You know, so if the guide says I've seen this before, you're okay, you can trust them because they've done it four hundred times or more. Yeah, just um, <clears throat> we'll go on to um, something a little bit different in a minute. Just just call a couple of people out on here. It's nice to see Brian here. I know Bry's been, he's had a, the same acceptance speech on some of the competitions for the last three years. So you never know, Bry, you'll never know. Although, you know, you, 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 you won a lot in life. <laughs> um, but Jay, yeah, I remember Jay bumped into each other in Portugal, mate. That was, uh, that was pretty crazy, wasn't it, during COVID? But I hope life is treating you well. Obviously, Jerome, uh, we got Jennifer, we got Paula Reed. Paula, I hope, um, uh, was it McEver Dog is, is doing well? Um, Tom Massetta, all the way from Greece, mate. Hope you're good. Just yeah, all, all the usual ever trekkers. We got Diane. So we got um, we got Chris. We got Dipak. We got Andy McNaughton Jones. I know you've been on Killy. First time Killy was great. Perfect summer night. Still clear, cold, but not bad. Ah, nice. Yeah, yeah, that, that sounds awesome. Like yeah, with us, we, we didn't really have too much um, visibility. It was freezing, mm -hmm. which is nuts because like literally a week before, because um, it takes obviously several days to get up there. We were down in, in Moshi, which is the, the town or the city where it's at the base of, of Kilimanjaro. And you're in 30 degree heat. So it wow. seems like completely different. Like you're at the top, you can see the summit and it's like, you. it's, it's just this, it's, it's, it's so different. Biggest temperature differential mm. in 24 hours from the summit. Yeah. 24 hours later, you're down. Yeah. And we were having, you know, a celebratory uh, beer. Yeah. And it was, it was 25 degrees, I think. Mad, you know, back down there, it was mad. absolutely good. It was really strange. It was like the night before we we're on Kilimanjaro and summer in, and and then then I was in I was in a gift shop. I think remember haggling with that guy. I do remember over that, yeah. the unique gift. Ask me about that gift. I oh, won't we'll talk about it here. That's all right. It it had nails in it and it looked like a pair of balls. Right? No, it was it was yeah. It was that's it was, it was, it was like, really like, weird. I don't even like the weird stuff. I remember saying to him, <laughs> "No one else is going to buy that." You know that, right? <laughs> like. I'm the only person he didn't that's give in, did he? He, didn't yeah, give he wouldn't have it. He wouldn't have it. Yeah, that's, but, um, it. that's the fun of that's it. That's all right. You know, you win some, you lose some. I'll go back. I'll get it. <laughs> um, brilliant. If brilliant. I had to ask you, Anne, what was your yeah, personal yeah. highlight of Kilimanjaro? So, um, what would what would you and you choose? Ooh. There's a couple. Uh, Barranco Wall, which is uh, I think it's on day five. Damn it, he's chosen one. I know. Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. For a reason, isn't it? Yeah. Because it's you know it is an amazing. So Barranco Wall. I know it's, it's weird because when you get to Barranco camp and you stay there and um, you get there after going what Dave said about the lava tower, you're, you, you, you look up at it and it's, it looks like two, 300 meters high and it looks almost impassable. And um, I know that's when Steve says, I'm saying impossible in an Irish accent. And I says, I'm impassable. 
Is that what you? Oh yeah. Yeah, I'll he says it. I'm like, I just said it. Remind me. Ramona's on you. Uh, she doesn't mind. She's <laughs> um, but yeah, and it's it looks. You know, you, you see people walking through it, and it looks like you've got to climb it, but there's not. There's a route through it. There's one section called uh, I think uh, Kissing Rock or Hugging Rock that you've got to kind of go around it. But the guides, you know, are there to, to make sure you're safe. Kissing Rock. Here we go. Mm. And um, yeah, it's it's a kind of one of the most probably the only exposed bit that on the entire face but it certainly looks crazy so that excited me i remember going through it and getting to the top you feel like you're on top of the world don't you because you're kind of looking yeah. down on the clouds it's amazing and you can get an awesome picture because you you do reach this rock plateau mm. and it's just got this sheer edge and if you just look at it it's like rock rock rock, it's rock sky yeah and there's nothing ahead of you but sky so it's amazing and you can do like this amazing picture where you can jump up and you can kind of just crop out the ground yeah it looks like you're floating probably one of my personal highlights as well i think you know what i really loved about kilimanjaro as yeah. well i loved camp life yeah it's, was, it's was, good, was, it? It was, was, you yeah, know yeah. like we had some of the most heated games of uno i think anyone's ever ever experienced well you you love the uno love the uno big mate. time big time mate i'll do it for money <laughs> <laughs> you know but yeah like it's great you'd sit down and then someone would get out a deck of uno and you just play cards or play uno and it's um you're having a laugh and stuff like that oh man i i absolutely love the camp life i think it's yeah it's i think you're right i think you're right i think i i know we want to move on but i think another biggie is the group dynamic um you know this goes on any trip like i i, I think i can't remember it might have been early this year you asked me about every space camp was my highlight and i think with killy it's still the same it's the group it's the people you're with especially when you you know you're you're going through the hard times because our altitude and mountains although it's it's an amazing thing. It's, it is, you know, truly life changing. It really can be. Um, but it's the people you're with. And saying that, I do like going and doing my own hiking and the solo walks and that. But I think on these sort of trips, when you're on a group and, you know, you're going through the hard times and someone gives you that pat on the back or you're helping someone, you're encouraging them. And then you see them on the summit. They may have shared a tear. There's hugs, high fives, maybe have, have, you know, a bit of wee dram. Um, it's just, it's really special. Though I think those are the moments that'll stay with me. Yeah. the longest because of the impact and the, and, and the friends you make and not just with like fellow you know ever trackers as well it's actually the guides you know yeah you have become friends with the guides and the porters and and those connections that you make and i think as human beings i think we all crave that connection that we make, yeah you know, with, with individuals you also especially touched the last couple of years one of my personal highlights was watching you hand a highlander <laughs> a scotch whiskey on the summit I remember now, we all you know everyone likes a little celebratory dram on the summit and he hands it to Spud, our friend, who takes it, puts his head back, <laughs> goes to pour it in, and nothing comes out. It, uh, you had carried an empty hip flask all the way it's up. A good job he had some more. But yeah. uh, it's luckily I, I've repaid it in kind now. He's, uh, I give him a new one with a full. We were on the summit at Tupcal about a month and a half ago uh, in in Morocco, and I made sure he had whiskey on the summit this time. Yeah, I wasn't going to let him down. Uh, um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's it's honestly it's. The, the, the group stuff is absolutely awesome yeah i love it yeah and um but david fitness let's talk about fitness then with killy um like what level would you say killy is at in terms of like okay i'm i'm out walking the dog i'm out maybe hiking maybe penavan maybe out yeah. the lake district peak district scotland where would i need to be at i think you want to be a relatively you know, fit hill walker i think you're able to do kilimanjaro particularly i mean there are some tough days and there are some real steep bits like the elephant's back, yeah. things like that. That yeah. asked, But most people, regardless of how fit they are, can, you know, chug their way up there nice and slow. But um, summit night, I think you do have to have had some trained endurance in the legs, in the back and be able to kind of push yourself on because it is a game of sort of attrition really yeah. summit night you get, you know, it's really long. You're awake a lot. So you feel tired anyway. And I think if you are, fairly well accomplished hill walker you'll have the you'll have yeah. the stamina in your legs to keep you going because there's nothing worse and i'm sure we've all been there when we've been on a trek we've bitten off more than we can chew yeah. and your legs are just dead and you're just you know, a few times yeah and you know so but i think getting out there and there's no better training really than for kilimanjaro than yeah. getting out there and walking in the hills with a pack on your back because yeah. although it sounds simple what you're doing is you're training that muscle memory you're getting your back used to carrying a pack for long distances. Your legs are getting used to the feeling of pounding and stuff like that. So it does make a big difference. Yeah. And and pretty much that's what we do. We just hike, right? We go with the Beck and Beacons. Yeah, like or, we're not 
a leap out in ears or you know i suppose we would call ourselves as two junkies these days but, but we um yeah we're not like you know we're not we're not ultra marathon runners and, and you know we're not kind of elite fitness level yeah um it's it's you know it's a hobby that's turned into something else obviously you know ever trek um you know has been going a while now it's different but on a personal level we, we, we love the trekking and the climbing stuff and you know we've had a lot of customers of, of all shapes and sizes you know um, yeah. you know i'll use james as an example and you know he's a good friend of ours um i think three weeks prior to um to go into to Killy, he was um he was on a photo shoot because he's a photographer um in las vegas um you know yeah. living it up and uh, obviously working as well but the um the point is he he wasn't that experienced he admittedly no. he was, you know he wasn't as fit as he wanted to be he was carrying a little bit of timber but you know what he battled and he made the summit of Killy, and i was really proud of him for that because um you know anyone that pushes through the difficulties and the challenges um you know i think you know deserves a lot um you know and yeah i got, got a lot of got a lot of time for for james and for anyone that can battle through those sort of things you know yeah and, you know so. but then again we do have you know triathletes and lots of our customers are uh, ultra marathon runners marathon runners runners but you don't have to be um if you are awesome it'll help the fitter you are the better time you'll have yeah but you don't have to be elite fitness so obviously you know as a professional trekking company we, we we always recommend you do training and we have training plans we also have um a little bit of partnership with the altitude center in london yeah who can give you um uh, fitness plans and things like that um that's in the members area once you you book a trip with us um you know so there, there are we, we're big on fitness but certainly we don't want it to be the only thing you think about no i mean there's yeah. more to it i mean there, there's yeah. several ingredients that go into making this stew and i yeah. think one of them is fitness nice. the nice. other one you know is is like we've talked about is the mindset yeah and then the other stuff is just following very simple things like hydration we were choosing the right route like we said initially about lomo show i honestly think with regards to training yeah. you know what a, a really good thing would do if you did a night climb of ben nevis i think you know start off in the night yeah that would be good yeah and, yeah um, definitely. because it's a yeah. it's not you're not on ben nevis as long as you are on kilimanjaro but yeah. in terms of its topography and things like that it's relatively similar like it's yeah. a long drag to the summit it's very rocky on there um, probably put you off <laughs> yeah and then and then it's a long drag back down um i mean coming down off and uh, honestly i found coming down kilimanjaro and ben nevis harder than going up yeah um for me it was just i think you're coming down quite steep rocky particularly good that ash yeah that, like it's got, dust oh, it's, oh, i love that it was like skiing yeah, down killy it was all right but it was it was still i was quite i was happened. so fed up of it by the time i got to the bottom I, initially i loved it this is great and it went on and on <laughs> but i tell you what was great though do you remember that time? i slipped yes and i landed in it and i had such a soft landing that and i was so tired and i thought oh, I'm too hard. <laughs> you're just gonna stay there. i just put my head back and closed Amazing. my eyes without realizing that you know my friends and the guides are probably looking at that <laughs> behind me saying are you all right <laughs> and i was like yeah yeah just, just um yeah. just call out james actually he's off to sweden james have an awesome time i, I think you're doing the king sled aren't you um yeah mate have an awesome time out there last bit of wi-fi for 35 days so what you're gonna miss four you're gonna miss at least four tune-ins mate you're gonna have a lot to catch up on when you get back yeah <laughs> james is one of our ever trackers he's um yeah he's been he's been on a couple of our trips um but yeah enjoy sweden mate and good luck can't wait to see the pictures um but yeah so <laughs> just reading some of the comments uh what the hike killy what about summit trek snowden yeah absolutely laura um you asked about snowden there i'm sorry you got heaps of questions we'll we'll definitely come through them in a bit um 100 summit snowden is great preparation mm. um you know any any mountain you know we get a lot of people that live in certain parts of, of england that you know there's not, not too many hills or mountains near and you've got to travel a few hours to get to them and, and as dave said earlier just getting out of a pack on your back we've even seen people in the you know, on a, like a stairmaster in the gym stairmaster is great uh with like a, a 20 kg pack on their back and you know anything that works the legs is, is beneficial what i like to do is i just have an inbuilt 20k um but no stairmaster is really good <laughs> you can't go wrong for that it'll really strengthen those quads which yeah. you need coming downhill um yeah actually jerome was saying it played hell on his knees honestly at that point jerome yeah. my knees weren't that bad in fact it was a reverse situation there yeah my bad knee was my good knee then <laughs> And what's now my good knee was my bad knee. Yeah, if you've, um, if you've been uh, part of the, the community for a while, you, you, you'll know that um, knee gate, hashtag knee gate, hashtag um, knee gate. or hashtag Dave's new knee. Um, yeah, he had a bit of an injury last year. Uh, this time last year. This time last this year? This time last year, was in a wheelchair, mate. That's right, you were post-op, weren't you? Yeah. Post-op, yeah. ACL reconstruction, so 
yeah, you, uh, you, you, you've got to go up to those bloody knees, mate. I told you. I'm trying to. But, you know, <laughs> life's boring if you're not going fast. <laughs> uh, Nigel, nice to speak yesterday. Dave, thanks for swapping trip and dates. I hear like, hey, you, Nigel. I hope all is well. Um, right, well, we've got a, a few more things to go into. I know if a lot of you are joined today because we want to do the winner announcement. We'll do a few questions because um, I feel like I want to make sure these are answered. Then we'll do the winner announcement. Then we'll try and finish off with some more questions. Yeah, so we'll um, we'll get through some cues. Oh, we should yeah. mention, actually. Okay. Who's, right. who's on the questions today? Is it, oh, is, yes. is it Lauren? I'm, well, I'm half is it hour in. Fee or Rosie? Uh, we've or actually is... got two new Yetis in the in the office today. Uh, well, they're actually from last week. And I think Vicky is on uh, comments today. Vicky, do say hello. I think um, she's been on the, the comments already. Um, I thought it was Jody. Uh, Jody, it could be Jody as well because Jody is here. Um, we're still waiting for the Yeti names to be confirmed uh, because all um, all people at Evertrek, uh, all uh, we call them employees, but more than that, they all Yetis need their own Yeti name. Um, but yeah, do welcome uh, both Jody and Vicky to the Evertrek world. Um, if you send an email or you're um, you know maybe changing your dates or paying for a trip or booking a trip you, you'll highly likely uh, be looked after by, by the wonderful jody uh, and vicky as well so yeah they'll be part of the of the, the family going forward yeah um we'll try and get them on a live at some point i'm still trying to persuade them but <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely do um, a bit of an intro for them as well over the coming weeks uh crazy yeti emily emily that's probably you um yeah. <laughs> oh my god i'm not going to read dave's out but if anyone for dave rimington yeah. does like to um show off <laughs> hey, oh, yeah. Jody's just taken over. Hey, hey, Jody. Oh, so, is, oh, you're doing half each. Oh, I like yeah. it. I like it. Now, on it. it. On it. Um, great stuff. Great does, that stuff. Mean, does that mean Vicky's able to come in and say hello? That's right. Oh, yeah, she's probably. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, we won't embarrass her. Um, but right, so let's take up some questions then because we had a few by email, a few in the okay. comments. Loads come in here. Right, yeah. Um, we've, we've got, we always struggle to get through them on these big lives. So we'll try and get as many done as we can, right? So, yeah, sure. what level of fitness do you need to climb Everest? Climb Everest. Uh, wow. Well, if you're talking about base camp, yeah, pretty much everything we just said for Kilimanjaro applies. Yeah. Um, so, just rewind that little thing back a little bit. If you're talking about <laughs> Everest, you need to be really, really, really fit. Um, you yeah. need to be in what I would term peak physical condition um, in order to do that because um, you're climbing the mountain not for a day or two days or a week, you're climbing there for a month. Yeah. you know up and down acclimatizing so yeah uh, by the time people come down from everest normally <laughs> they're a wreck so yeah you need to start off as fit yeah. as you can be just read it emily as well p.s i named my falls lutzi and boron say the, the ever falls that's amazing love that the, the ever falls right that so, sounds like a band name so em <laughs> emily why don't we have pictures of the ever falls that's a good point actually we need pictures of i'm a little bit concerned about the ever falls not being shown we'll have to get pictures emily you've heard it we need we need you need to send those in um yeah drop us a little message or something with pictures of the everfalls that's brilliant yeah. knowing dave you probably put them above his desk so yeah yeah i've got a few things you've got there. a few things leah there. sent us some stuff she did all the way from australia yeah yeah crocodiles this time <laughs> she always sends us interesting you, things you know I my, think... you know i'm a fan of crocs mate i know you... wow that is a... i know you're a fan of crocs i love crocs They're different type of crocs though right yeah all these four by four uh i haven't got them on today what I, no i put my um i've got my um when you run into like I'm not getting on with them, so I think they're just gonna be casual. Um I'll tell you what, Vicky's put here something it's 59. This is from Paul, uh for uh Paul Rowell. As a 59-year-old male, what stress does high altitude place on the body? And how do I prepare for it? Yeah, big question there, definitely a big one. I mean, firstly, you mentioned your age. Um, you know, we've got a lot of ever trackers around similar age to you. A lot of ever trackers who are significantly older than you that have made base camp, some in Killy. Um, we had a gentleman called Alan, big ever trekker. He's coming back, but uh, I think he's out of Perna, but he did um, one of our hardest trips, which is the um, Three Peaks Three Passes, and he was 74. So, yeah, it just depends on where you're at. I mean, as, as Dave mentioned earlier, if you're out walking, you know, you've got a decent level of fitness. Like I say, you don't have to be superhero level here. Um, you know, you're, you're going to be fine. It's We have all levels of fitness, and sometimes, you know, the people who aren't as fit, um, because they go slower, they acclimatize better. And you mentioned there what stress does high altitude place on the body. Yeah, it puts a lot of stress. Um, we can't hide the fact that altitude is and can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, that's high altitude. That's why it's adventure travel. You know, it's not a holiday. Um, you know, we always like to be open and honest with everyone that comes on a trip, you know, and not to kind of say, oh, yeah, it's going to be like this, where actually, you know, when you get there, it's really hard. 
And it does. But, you know, that's not saying it's impossible. That's not saying it's horrible. Um, altitude is great. Like, as long as you go slow, you take your time, you look after yourself, you, you hydrate yourself, um, you know, by drinking plenty of water in the day, um, you know, you, you will be fine. And naturally, you know, although you know, if you went straight to 5,000 meters, it'd be difficult. But when you go from, a, from a, you know, like, say, two and a half thousand meters, and then as you're slowly hiking, your body does acclimatize. Your breathing isn't really any different. You still breathe the same. You just breathe more often. So it's like anything. You go up a steep hill. Like imagine you go to Ben Nevis. When you go in steeper, you naturally slow down, don't you? And altitude is the same, but it's just not that steep. So, for instance, if, you, if you're hiking or trekking at, say, 5,000 meters, you know, every step will be slower. Um, but, yeah, we, we go back to the danger aspect of this. We, we always call it a managed danger. Um, it's something that our guides control, we can control, you can control. Um, and it's, yes, yeah, more than achievable. And it's awesome, especially when, you know, you got Summit Achilles and, you know, it's you reach the summit and you've been through those challenges. You know, it's, it's something about that. And Dave, I think you said something before about, um, I think it was first of all, we recorded Kilimanjaro the long way. You said about when you reach a summit and you go through the challenges, it kind of it stays with you longer rather than the ones where you spend on a beach. I think so, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I think, yeah, when you go through the beach, when you go through, when you go through, <laughs> when you go through hell and back, it gives you, <laughs> you know, you've got more of, um, yeah, you learn about yourself. Yeah, you learn about your capabilities, what you like, what you don't, who you are. Yeah, you know, and exactly. there's, there's, there's only a, I mean, I, I may be wrong, but I've never had those epiphanies on a beach. I like it, I enjoy it, but when I come back, I'm the same person as when I left. You know, yeah. but when I come back from these trips, I, I, I do feel different. Um, Definitely, yeah. So we got a question from uh, Diane. Diane. So that's uh, Di, Diane. Di Fisbach. Um <laughs> So you have Killy in September. You do then EBC in November. Finally, oh, it feels like Diane's been waiting years to go. Do they differ <laughs> in terms of luggage? Um, not really. The 90, 99 percent of the equipment that you need for Killy is the same as EBC and yeah. vice versa. Um, the only thing I would say that you need for Kilimanjaro is I would definitely bring an air mattress, um, you know, and a, and a pump to blow it up with, even if that's just a hand or foot pump. Yeah. Um, you can use, our, use ours, right? But the yeah, we do provide them, know, but they're, 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 you, they're hard. Yeah, they're very they're very firm. So I think yeah, for, uh, that and maybe a poncho, a rain poncho. You see them a lot on Kilimanjaro because mm -hmm. it does tend to rain quickly and then stop rain, then stop, um, particularly lower down. So you don't want to be like putting on trousers and a jacket and then taking them off all the time. So ponchos yeah. are very popular on Kili. And yes, you can 100% leave a suitcase in the hotel. Yeah. They got um, they also have like safety deposit boxes and things so you can leave. Um, passports and things like that when you're away so all good nice um ash ash dixon hey guys uh me and my friend about to book uh map tube cow with you for next march um i know you two have done it uh will i need to take my own crampons and ice axe in march is it strenuous hike so yeah ash great a couple of good big questions there obviously yeah. tube cow in he's a little bit inaccurate it's all right dave i wasn't gonna say anything <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um but no with with tube cow in march um having done it a similar time yes so crampons and ice axe are recommended that time of year. Sometimes, you know, uh, um, especially in the Atlas Mountains, you can get lucky. It's really warm. There won't be much um, ice or snow up there. But during the winter months and coming out of winter, um, sometimes actually all the way until sometimes June, even now, there might be some snow up there. Um, but we actually, um, and you get the, the crampons and the ice axe, they do provide it there locally. Mm -hmm. um, so you can use those. Or if you want to bring your own, like I took my own, um, you can do that. Uh, we get a lot of customers who take their own gear if they've got it um but if you haven't got it we've um you know we've uh you can use ours i was gutted i left mine do you remember i was at the yeah. airport and i was like with the ice axe yeah, yeah. And I, I just well, i'm just gonna leave it save on the luggage Nothing and then like and your then own weapons gonna, mate yeah i should say <laughs> inaccurate just because um i i, I turned back yeah you know, but you know hey it was illness if you yeah. if you haven't been on previous um previous lives yeah there's a yeah do there's... watch one we did actually a live all the way from marrakesh um do check that one out it's really good we go all the way into tubecal talking about you know how it was like the physicality of it um so which is all about um tubecal itself so i highly recommend that um if you go back on the previous lives um around about april time you'll be able to see it. i think it was epi actually it was episode 100 that's right because it was our 100th episode definitely check that out um because you've you put there is it a strenuous hike um yes if you're doing the weekender uh, it's quite a lot of ascent and descent in a short period of time your legs will feel it altitude not so much if you're doing the the, the slightly longer eight day route that we do um it's good the altitude profiles are a lot easier a lot less strenuous 
but again, it's still challenging. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Ash, yeah, get yourself booked in, mate. We'll awesome. um, love to have you with us. I want to shout out yes. to Ian Pickles. You oh, found the van. That was great. Left me an awesome note. Um, what does it say on there? It says... Uh, is he a, oh, he's, he's a so I've got to say what he says. <laughs> uh, best trekking company ever. Fact. Um, the wow. thing, what he doesn't um, know is that I actually left you a little note on the front of my dash as well, but I don't think you saw it. See, I drew a little <laughs> yeti. yeti. Yeah, nice. drew, drew a little yeti. Brilliant. Um, yeah, but uh, no, that it's crazy to people that it's every time I go to Preston. Remember the last time I went to Preston. Your friend, I think it was someone that followed you, right? Who was going to meet you? <laughs> he was going to meet Andy somewhere. Saw my van, followed me two two junctions. He missed on the, <laughs> the, the Yeti. On the the Yeti, M5. Yeti get around. Um, um, right, we got probably about another ten questions. I think what we'll do, Dave, I reckon we'll do the winner announcement now. Should we do the winner announcement? Yeah, then? just yeah, because I know good. a lot of you are joined to see the winner announcement today. Um, now, when we do this, uh, obviously whoever wins um, will be in touch with you. Uh, hopefully, you're on the live. But if not, you know we have. Had some winners in the past who've won a trip with us and they haven't been on the live but we'll, we'll get in touch as soon as we can uh, by email or facebook messenger um and call you and just let you know you won um but yeah kilimanjaro you're gonna love it whoever wins don't forget you get to bring someone with you um which is awesome uh and having done killy it's it's truly a life-changing experience um it really really is um you know i know this one's kilimanjaro i know uh people here do do an EVC competition do we we, we've done one over the last few years, yes, but this time it's Killy. Um, and yeah, I think it's only right now for everyone. One thing, are, okay. we, are we flipped? Uh, yes, I will have to revert to the. Yeah, you'll have to revert. Way. So it will throw the. the it will, the, it will the, look the, weird for a it second. It will throw the, the feng shui it off will, a little will. briefly. But it's okay. But yeah, just to, just to let you know that we are, um, for anyone who doesn't win, uh, do check your emails because we do um, some runner up prizes. Um, afterwards as well so do keep an eye on your emails if you're not um, the winner and obviously if you are interested anyway you know we'd love to help you on your journey because you know as, as high altitude trekking specialists you know all our trips are high altitude um you know we, we like to think we know what we're doing we have very high success rate and you know people in our community tend to have an awesome time and we've got a great community um we're very proud of that um and, I, and you know if you want to become an ever trekker we'd love to have you and, and help you on your journey yep um, but yeah, but if this is you, obviously there's going to start of a journey anyway. But right, Dave, I best I'm going to mi and mirror. Like, should we swap sides quickly? Uh, no, it'd be fine. I'll be back. You ready? No, mate, we're going to swap now. Ready? Yeah. Uh, okay, we'll do it really quickly. Ready, Dave? Go. Okay, go, go. There we go. That was like magic, Dave. Yeah. Okay, so the winner is. Try, try, try. I, I feel like we need like drums try, or something. Try, try bring it in. Uh, yeah, let's have a look. Where are people at? How, how are people feeling? I think a few people are excited. I'm not sure. There's not that many excited comments. I'm not no, getting to that many excited comments. Not sure, so we don't... I'm not too sure. I'm waiting for some more excited comments, but everyone's saying. <laughs> no, there's a few coming in now. Um, no, great stuff, great stuff. Yeah, it's... Um, here we go. Okay, Dave. My arms Bring it in. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to roll in. You're going to roll in? The winner is... Rachel. Rachel. Rachel Horton. Horton. <laughs> Congratulations, Rachel. Nice, Dave. Nice. There well we go, done. We go, we go. Is, that, is, that, is that enough there? Andrew Gaffick? You could read that. <laughs> this, this is for afterwards when we take a screenshot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if Rachel is on the live, do let yourself know because it'd be great to see if you're on the live. If not, you might be in work. I know people have lives. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, congratulations, Rachel. You know, it's. We hope. Oh my God, she's on the live. There she is. <laughs> oh my God, she, oh, is that the first time a winner's been on the live? No, we actually, I just know. It says Bride by McAlpine no. on the back. <laughs> Don't that must be that. a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no. Um, it's great you're on the live, and um, yeah, I hope that is a good feeling for you today, Rachel. Um, yeah, well. we'll we'll be in touch. Um, yeah, huge congratulations. You know, yeah. the, well, I'll tell you what, we're gonna we're gonna flip this back. I've never won anything oh. before. Awesome, Rachel. Well, this she, is what she, knows, is like. she knows to get me right there. That <laughs> no, Rachel, yeah, wait, I got some mm, tissues over there. It's yeah, funny. massive congratulations, Rachel. <laughs> um, yeah, you're on your way to Kilimanjaro. Yes. You're gonna get to the summit. You're gonna have an amazing time. It's gonna change your life. Yes, you're gonna love it. Don't forget, you gotta bring some with you. So yeah, um, good luck. Definitely, we'll 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 be in touch after this live uh, once we got a lot of questions to get through. But yeah, um, congratulations, uh, uh, Brian. Here's Brian. Rachel, uh, I mentioned him available as a tracking buddy. He's already going. Uh, to I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna quietly have a word with Rachel about that. You know, <laughs> to be careful who she chooses. <laughs> <laughs> but you're, 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 you're still, um, still taking offerings to go, right? 
yourself. Yeah, I, I'm pretty much one of the only people on this planet who's guaranteed never to win. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we don't enter it. So no, no, obviously, uh, yeah, we have to be fair. But no, um, yeah, we picked out Rachel, um, and yeah, uh, can't wait. Uh, we'll get in touch. But right, um, oh, it's always such a good feeling, isn't it? Um, I love it. Seeing it's my favourite part of the day. I know it's absolutely amazing, and you know we can't wait um, to be part of your journey now, Rachel. Um, <laughs> sorry to everyone that um, that ha didn't win, but as we said, do check your emails over the next couple of hours. Um, we will be um, firing out some details to any uh, lucky uh, runner-ups out there. Um, but right, Dave, I think we'll, we'll, we got. Um, Around, we got lots of questions yeah. um, to go through. Um, Charlotte, how many people entered? I think we had about almost eleven thousand people this time. So yeah, it was. Um, it's certainly a very popular competition. Um, but yeah, it, it always is when we do um, some competitions. And yeah. Thanks to everyone who entered and was part of it and shared. Um, you know, and obviously, you know, increased the chances of winning. And uh, yeah, it was great. It's always good, good energy. Um, you know, around around the any any competition we run. Um, but right, Dave, let's get on some with some questions. Right. So right, I'm gonna start. Uh, where where should I pick? Because uh, we are we are. Was it Tom, Tom Massetto has put a good question just after yeah. Ash. That's a really good one. Uh, just after Ash, said, okay, where do the porters get their water from? Yeah. Um, surely they can't uh, carry yeah, enough really? from the start. So yeah, so there's local. There's there's plenty of water sources on Kilimanjaro where they're able to get it, um, <clears> and then you know boil it, purify it, stuff like that. Um, yeah. So that's where they get it from. Um, so are you reading some? Uh... I did, I just heard a shotgun go off in Essex. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, um, no, 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 very good. Let's have a quick look now. So, uh, Helen Graham Gordon, yes, um, she wants to know about the toilet situation on Kilimanjaro. Always good. Yeah, yeah, you do go to the toilet, um, but no, no, I'm joking. Sometimes more than <laughs> yeah, when you're at altitude, certainly, yeah, you want to, um, it's, it's like anything, um, and, and more so on Killy because you know, you, you are in camps um, now some of these camps have long drops now we use um we, we, we bring our own um so we have our own toilets that we bring um yeah so essentially we'll need to use those you can use those if you know they're busy or anything i've used them um but yeah there are places to go a toilet on there um and, and the same goes for you know if you need to go you need to go sometimes when you're on the route and you're not at camp um you know there are uh, places where you can you know go to toilet um you know certain people um you know like i know we've had to sort of dash you know if you've got a dodgy belly or something mm -hmm. um but yeah the old um the old long drops as jerome says on there um but yeah the we, we do use sort of private toilets now which is a bit nicer yeah um which is good um, can't we just have toilet situation yeah you'll do fine um uh, some ladies we know i, I know on here have used um shiwis before as well um you know just just for um, i couldn't go on with it nor have I. I'm not too <laughs> there are a lot of ever trekkers who have, and they and they use them and they're fine. Um, but yeah, and, and altitude because you're drinking so much water to hydrate, you will pee more. Yeah. Um, especially, um, I don't know if you've heard of uh, Diamox before, um, Helen. But yeah, a lot of um, you know, I'd say about half ever trekkers use that um, because it helps um, with altitude, and um, it does make you pee more as well. So do take that account when when drinking water. Hundred percent. Yeah. Um, Shivani, uh, Sony Sara has asked, how long should one train for Kili? To be honest, it kind of depends from where you're starting from. Um, generally speaking, people tend to book their Kili trips about a year in advance yeah. on average. Um, if you do that, I would start right away, but start gradually. So just start going and hiking on the weekend, you know, and then gradually increase that. And then, you know, you can add in a couple more yeah. hikes during the week, or you can add in some gym work um but you know don't train like going into space or anything like that you know you can just start gradually and just start building up your fitness essentially what you're aiming for is if someone calls you and says do you want to go and do a long hike on the weekend it's about 15 mile you want to be in a situation where you go yeah yeah let's do it and not have any worries you know you want to get to that level of fitness yeah. um so yeah hopefully that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea we can talk we've done whole lives on training so go back through the back catalog and you'll find somewhere we've gone into a lot more detail about what we do how we do it when we do it stuff like that nice um lee has asked lee davy hey lee how are you um i know you're on our training weekend many moons ago um and i've done base camp mate but yeah i hope life is treating you well um boys are the guides as killy as good as the, as the shirt was helping you through um i presume the ones uh, you meant obviously the ones in the pool absolutely um i mean you know any any guide that we have in any country and you know, obviously you're going to get your, your ones who are more experienced but we obviously got guides in nepal but 
you know, have been have been sort of trekking the base camp and some of them are summited Everest and some are 8,000 meter mountains. Um, but then if you look at Kili as well, like um, Yessi, he's summited Kili over 400 times. He's an absolute beast. Um, but it's this different culture. And, and this is every every place that we do are different in, in their own way. Like the, the Sherpas and the guides, you know, they're very quiet individuals. You have some of them that still love to dance. But I think in, in Tanzania, essentially, it's a very, it's a lot more energetic, a lot more singing, a lot more dancing, different energy. Um, I think that's just the, the culture difference. Um, and certainly, but they're, they're amazing. And, you know, I, I don't want to sort of spoil the surprise, but after dinner, um, each night you will um, see what I mean about yeah. that. Um, but yeah, I don't want to spoil the surprise. But they're great. Honestly, they're really good. And um, on all of our trips, we wouldn't use um, people if they weren't the right fit. Yeah. Um, when it comes to, you know, us as, you know, because we're really strong with, with Evertrack and what we stand for. And I think some of our guides are, you know, like that. You know, they're fun, they're playful, but they're professional and they're very good. Um, yeah, and they're, they're, they're good lads, really good lads, and you'll get to know them really well. Yep. Awesome. Um, so a quick question here. I just yes. thought it, it moves on its own sometimes. Uh, <laughs> Paul, Paula Hughes, what's our thoughts on the Charme hey, route? Um, yeah. So it's not like I have any massive strong feelings about it, mm. but we only do one route, and that's the Lamosho route. Um, yes. We want you to have one and uh, a long and enjoyable experience. We're not in a rush to get to the top of Kili. Yeah. So anything shorter than the Lamosho really doesn't sort of flow our boat. <laughs> but the probably the primary reason, as we've mentioned, is the acclimatization. If you look at, you know, success rates are always a little bit difficult to judge because who's keeping track of all of this. Yeah. But we do know that a lot of, if you're doing Kili in five days, there's probably like uh, around about a 50% dropout rate. When you do Kili over the Lamosho route, which is eight days, yeah. those extra three days, it, you know, you're in the high 90s. You know, it makes a massive difference. And we yeah. want all of our customers to be able to get to the top, get back down and say, that was awesome. Uh, we don't want people to either get to the top and say, good Lord, let it end. And we don't want people to have to turn around and come back down where a couple of days would have made the difference. Nice. So, yeah. Um, yeah, just, I, I've got a couple of questions here, but I think someone asked about, um, I think it was Tom actually been clearing out wardrobe, uh, got some spare clothes, good conditions that we've taken. Yeah, uh, to Moshi. Yeah, absolutely, mate. That would be amazing. Um, anything that you want to bring to um, any trip, like we had some other trackers who brought some, um, they had some uh, old iPads or laptops, and they give it to some of the teams um, in Nepal, which was amazing. And also as well, like any equipment, any um, uh, items that you want to give, honestly, they'd be very thankful for it. Um, they will we'll always find a use, you know. And although we run trips and, you know, we, we enjoy them, you know, we, we forget and maybe don't see sometimes. But, yeah, you know, like Nepal is a third world country, um, similar to Tanzania, you know, very poor countries, really. Um, you know, and anything you can do. And that's, that's really nice of you, Tom. Um, yeah, but anyone on, on any of our trips, yeah, if you do want to bring this stuff, I know obviously it's additional baggage and really appreciate um, you obviously bringing those, but if you do, it mean a lot. It mean, yeah. it mean a lot to us and mean a lot to the people you receive it to. Um, awesome. Yeah, um, so the next one that I saw was um, Ramona asking thermals to make Dupcal in July. <laughs> you probably won't. Yeah, um, it's quite it's, warm. It's going to be July, really yeah. warm, particularly. Yeah. I mean, you. You maybe in the so night if you suffer from the cold. Yeah. Maybe in the night and maybe on summit when you when you go for the summit because you set off uh, quite early. Yeah. Um, it could be quite cold, but honestly, um, if I had thermals when I was there, I'd have burned them. <laughs> but honestly, I would say probably we want to. You know, there's no harm in bringing them. Yeah. You know, they don't take up a lot of space or weight, so I would bring some with you. Um, but you know, the likelihood of you needing them, I don't think very very high. Nice. Uh, Glenn, um, Glenn Simpson, I've heard EBC is moving again. Any truth to this? Yeah, absolutely. So Glenn, uh, yeah, you may have, I mean, a lot of you may have seen in the news. Um, I know we put a little post out about it. Um, just because some people were a bit, you know, kind of concerned, you know, go, they booked in to go to Everest Base Camp. Is it moving? And yeah, so essentially it, it, it impacts more the summit teams uh, because of where they stay and where they sleep. Um, like where we stay and where we sleep on the way to Everest Base Camp is still, still always going to be the same. Um, now, essentially, every space camp is, is an X on the map. It moves, um, always has done. Um, it's quite a big area as well. It's about a mile and a half area on the uh, Kumbu Glacier, um, which is not far from uh, the Kumbu Icefall, which is where they start the climb, called Crampon Point, where everyone puts on the crampons and then off they go. Um, for the trekking side of it, we don't foresee any changes. 
Um, if there are, we, we will, you know, obviously communicate that to everyone. Um, but yeah, it's, it's more to do with essentially Nepal every, and they, they try and do this, uh, you know, every year is they always try and get a bit of PR. They, they, they say, okay, we're going to do this, or we're going to do this, we're going to do this. Like there's been numerous things, I think since 2012, mm -hmm. um, where they said they're going to do to change. And out of all those changes, I'd say sometimes there's like 10 to 12 a season. They might do one of them, you yeah. know? And so, the, you know, I, and I appreciate this is in the news and this is out there and it's always, it's, it's a great question because, you know, we want to, we want to make sure that you guys, um, you know, don't know what's coming, but yeah, if for instance, um, this does come into effect, it won't happen until 2024. Um, but you know, the, when it comes to, to these kind of things, you know, um, just remember that base camp, especially if you go in, in the, the spring, it, it, it does change anyway. Um, but yeah, you'll still be going to have a space camp wherever that may be. Yeah, and that's it. They do it. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't there's see a, they'll do it because it's I don't, I don't the reason they said about moving it won't affect the you know and, and you know we've spent a lot of uh, time chatting about sustainability and protecting the environment. And, you know, we are big on that. Um, that's why we introduced water filters in the Himalayas. You know, we um, a lot of the work we do in Mossy Earth. You know, there, there's other things we do, but I, I don't think. I mean, this is just a personal opinion of mine. I don't think what they're put in will change things no much. i don't think so and not for because it's it, it, the things they said that are happening they've happened for the last 40 years 50 years and, anyway and it's more about like you said that when people climb everest an, an entire village yeah. arrives on that glacier and stays yeah. there for a month yeah trackers each individual tracker is there for an hour or two maximum yeah. sometimes less than that so i don't think it'll affect us <laughs> um that. bbc moving just after mick hamilton got back is that just a coincidence yeah, yeah. probably right brian <laughs> Yeah, mix uh, brilliant savage. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's have a look. Uh, da, 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 da. So, uh, Jan Wilshaw, wondering if yeah, wondering if Dave has a Yeti tattoo. It's coming. He's got every, everything else. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> Is that you get the one Ellie drew? Ellie drew, yeah. yeah, yeah. So oh, Ellie, drew, daughter, yeah. Ellie drew a group picture of us all as Yetis. Yeah. And um, she was very. Yours was very good, huh? Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 and I said I was going to get it, and I'm going to get it. You should. I'm going to find the. You got. I, I say there's some space somewhere, mate. Yeah, um, somewhere. <laughs> Shona, when are the Iceland trips going to launch? Oh, honestly, we're, we're, I think we said this about a month ago, didn't we? We're so close to launching that. Um, yeah, we just got to get it right. Got to get it right first. We don't want to just put it out there, Shona. You know what we're like. Take our time with these things, but um, I know you're 100% um, will be getting that out there as soon as we can. Um, <laughs> Jan, can we see it when it's done? Yeah, hundred percent, mate. Yeah, hundred percent. And um, it's the, I'll be honest, they're hard to hide <laughs> at this date. But um, do you know uh, what? Do you know what? Do you know I call the Sinead last week? You didn't. I had to message her. You, you realise you're going to wear like forty beers by the next she time. Does, you see it. She doesn't drink. Forty orange juices. Yeah, yeah juice. exactly. <laughs> but um, do you know what it was? I had a migraine last week. Really? Yeah. When well, wasn't it? Oh wow. Uh, yeah. So it was. Um, yeah, they wouldn't know because of the level of professionalism that I exude. But I did have one. And uh, I, that's what I'm putting that name to. Brilliant. Yeah. I can only really see half the screen. Depends where it gets it. Oh, mate, I hope you're better this week. Um, right, we've got a couple more questions before we finish, because we usually last for about an hour, and I don't want to leave these questions going. I am. Becky has asked, Becky Moore, do you need previous mountain skills for Tupacal in, in, in winter? Uh, they do help, Yeah. but you don't necessarily need them. Like, we had people who had turned up, and they hadn't been on that kind of terrain before. Um, and yeah, you, they, they were shown how to use the crampons and the ice axe. Um, most of the time, actually, I mean, even like just myself, I didn't actually use the ice axe, use my poles and then, you know, cause it is steep, but if you're comfortable on, on snow, it's fine. Um, you know, we do from time to time run winter skills. Um, if you can do a winter skills weekend, definitely helps any time you spend on snow will help you. If you go a different time of the season, when there's not snow up there. It's just very, very, um, scrambly if you like. Um, especially at the top, but most of it is is quite easy to read. Um, just challenging because of the physicality. Um, Diane's quickly asked, "Do you camp while you're in the jungle?" Yes. Um, do you need to be careful about spiders, Dave? Uh, I didn't see any. I mean, we do one camp uh, at the beginning. It's a big yeah, tree, big which, tree yeah. which is in the which is in the sort of the forest zone. Um, I didn't. I saw ants. We saw some ants. Yeah. Saw ants, and one of, them, one of them did bite a uh, Rasheen. Yeah, that's leg. right. That was, that, it off. that was hilarious. We did um, get it on camera. But yeah, Rasheen, Rasheen is a good friend. She, yeah, she's so funny. <laughs> you know, if it can happen to anyone, it'll happen to Rasheen. But um, I didn't see any spiders. I'll have to look. I'll have to look it up. Um, yeah, there might. Too many I, I don't know. I take possibly, yeah. um, but only probably a big tree. Beyond that, I don't imagine there's much. Um, uh, although you know, I think there's a spider that lives on Everest. You know, 
I think it's very small though. Really? Yeah. I think if you're worried about big giant black tarantulas, then I don't think you need to. Yeah, just don't, um, don't tell that to Leah in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Leah literally, literally has to like you know, like, people in Australia like empty out their shoes, like tap them before putting well, them I was in Australia, I did, but I'm, I'm not sure. Leah, is that happened? I'm sure it does. Do you're right, Leah can put an argument. Lauren told me yesterday, right, right that kangaroos pretend to be drowning, right, in the sea. Yeah. You go in to rescue it. Next thing you know, it drags you in and drains you. Wow. I call shenanigans. <laughs> I don't think. I wonder they, what you're going to say. Though. I don't. Yeah, I was going to. I was going to. I was going to. I was going to do what? What's, what's, what's that sign language for? Yeah. <laughs> I was uh, this one. That that one. Yeah. I call that my diving. But um, maybe she can. Maybe she can. Um, it's, it's not the spiders. It's the scorpion climbing. Yeah. Exactly. Um, right. Last couple of questions, then. Dave. Uh, oh right. Yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> um where was it becky uh, jerome. jerome uh when is the next training weekend boys august but i think yes. it's all day it is yes fully booked um, um unfortunately we we're hoping to get another one out in october time yeah we'll be releasing the dates very very soon to get yourself booked in. yeah exactly but um oh, man this one's epic as well the next one you've got yourself booked on boys because uh, <laughs> uh jerome and girls because it is rammed now it, it is yes yeah, very much very popular now um our training weekends for any newbies um we kind of do about twice a year now um and they're just basically times for ever trackers to catch up we do a lot of hiking and brecon beacons not far from ever track hq here in south wales um and always a cracking weekend you get to know obviously the, the bit more of the team as well yeah um and you know we get make sure you're prepared ready ready to go yeah i used to jan i used to use that diving signal exactly mate so yeah, that's it um i to see if you why would you need that underwater uh just when someone tries to show off well if someone says i've run out of air <laughs> no, that's not the first thing i'd say yeah okay but normally it's when you're messing around because i, I used to teach scuba diving a long time ago and um yeah you, you you mess around when you're waiting for stuff you know um right last question then um chris tom chris congrats on making base camp mate how often do the guys replace the water filter systems what is the lifespan yeah the 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 water filters that we use um we introduce they do have a lifespan um, which you can buy um, separately, but the guys do replace them. It's normally every season, you know, that they kind of replace yeah. them. And, you know, we want to make sure that they're still filtering. Yeah. Um, I mean, they have a lifespan of, I don't know, let's say it was 200 litres. Yeah. I imagine we'll do 198 <laughs> and then replace it. It's, it but, it yeah. is one of those. It's a rough estimate, but yeah. they, they do um, they do boil the water as well. And then obviously then they filter it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I reckon... You've got one more day? Uh yeah, Lee Davies what? asked what suggest what our value we want on the mats. Okay. I think they go from zero to six. Yeah. I, and I think probably three or four. Because I think one to two yeah. is summer use, five to six is real extreme winter use. So I would I'd go for the middle. That's yeah, pop out that is because I'm not hundred percent certain. I would say honestly, you don't you don't need them you don't need because you're not you know on Kilimanjaro and things like that, you're not on ice pack yeah. or anything like that. So um really the mat is there just to provide you more comfort than it is yeah. sort of a survival tool so honestly any anyone will be absolutely fine um you know the r rating ones is more if you're like sleeping on a glacier if you're on Everest space camp and you're overnight yeah. in then you want one that retains the heat but yeah there we go okay well look um appreciate everyone coming on uh today um i hope you've enjoyed it uh nice to be back um yeah as, as we said before we're here every tuesday yeah we do talk about different subjects different things we socks before sort of a different thing uh, but maybe different next one it's a popular one um but no any other questions i know uh, people have dropped some questions here um do drop us a message um you know info at evertrack.co.uk or use the messenger on the website um obviously we just announced the the winner like i said earlier do check your emails we do like to send out some uh, runner-up prizes so if you do get one of those um yeah we'd love to hear from you and if you want to be part of the evertrecker community jump on our trips we'd love to have you join us um but yeah dave any final thoughts for today no that's it um i've noticed a couple of people um in the earlier comments saying they, they're going to tune in regularly so yes come back you know Definitely. um come see us not just when we're giving away trips come see us more. <laughs> we got loads of awesome stuff tell you but no honestly it is great love these lives when there's loads more people coming on um and we hope you stay with us and you know if you don't not able to catch us every tuesday then youtube um then Matt the, Malarkey the, podcast. the Matt and Malarkey yeah. podcast you know what do they say comment like subscribe all of that sort of stuff helps all us, good it? stuff yeah yeah but um, other than that yeah. no um I'm, I'm hungry i, I could say <laughs> <laughs> no great stuff guys um yeah anything you need give us a shout and um yeah we'll see you next week take it easy bye